Hello, welcome once again to Weekend Worship with Harmonious Choral. It's so great to come into your homes. We have a special feature today, something that we've not done before. It's going to be exciting. But before we go deep into that, let's go and take our theme song for season two, Onyame Akasa by James Farrick Ama. We'll be right back. Let me go. 
Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is Weekend Worship with Harmonious Choral. It's a beautiful day. We are in the studios of Divine Media HD, bringing you heavenly definition of live streaming. My name is Osain Nyanku Emmanuel, Public Relations Director for Harmonious Choral. If you are yet to share the link, if you are watching us on YouTube, kindly share the link to your friends and family. If you're on Facebook, share it to your contacts. I mean, let's gather around and have this awesome time of worship. As usual, I'm here with my beautiful co-host, Amanda Ifwa Abrakwa. Amanda, you look so lovely. <laughs> Thank you, boss. Yeah, nice hair. Is it a new one or see, the same? See, you haven't been paying attention. No, I've paid attention. Okay, this time <laughs> one is to your left. I think that's why. It's a one guy's Yeah, yeah, there, there's much change. Okay, so today we're having a special feature. We want to do a study on Joseph. Joseph in the Bible. And when I say Joseph, I'm referring to the 11th child of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, the 11th child of Israel, not Joseph, the father of Jesus. <laughs> so we are talking about Joseph. And today we are going to have lots and lots of discussions um, about a lot of um, insight into the story of Joseph, how God lifted him to become a man of prominence who came to Africa um, to save the world. So we are talking about a whole lot of things. We can talk about personal um, impact, and then we are also talk about um, the regional impact, uh, politics. And the story of Joseph is replete with a lot, lots of examples. So that is what we are going to delve into. But Amanda, I guess we have some people who will be joining us for the discussion. Yes, we do. Okay, so yes, set the ball do. rolling. Well, as um, I think, I don't think we have really made much noise about this. But to be honest, this was the first time that the whole book had been performed in Africa. Yes. That's at the time we're doing it. Yes, and um, even globally, it, it's, been, it's been in obscurity. So yes. I actually, we brought it to light in 2017. Yes, before I think an orchestra in USA did the audio in 2019 or so. Yeah, yeah and for the fact that we attempt, attempted to finish the whole book in less than a month, in, in two months, yeah. we actually rehearsed for six months. Uh, no, six weeks? Seven weeks. Seven weeks. Yes. Plus the concert week, it was seven Eight. weeks. Eight. So when, when director came and said, we are doing this book in seven weeks, everybody thought he was crazy because it's not a normal soprano, alto, tenor, bass. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a whole lot. But hey, James Wright, come on, says he wants to do it, and he has done it. And today, we'll be joined by um, two of the characters that played Joseph and his brethren in 2017. Yeah. I'm talking about Lordina Eugenia Ose, who played... Um, what did she play, Gra? Asuna. <laughs> Asuna, the daughter of the Potiphera, the, the high priest. And Joel. Joel yeah. played Fano, Fano yeah. the, the chief butler. Yeah. Yes. So in the course of the discussion, we'll be joined by them. Yeah. And then we can have discussions around okay. their preparations and what it meant to them if, and all that. If they're on, let's, let's, let's try and bring them in. If, Are if they ready? On. Okay. So hello, guys. Hello. Hi, Lodina. How are you doing? Hi. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Joel, is Joel on the line also? Okay, so Joel is yet to join us, but since we have Lodina, we can start with Lodina whilst we wait for uh, Joel to join. So Lodina, how was it for you when director called you and said you are playing such a lead role in a book that was about to make history in Africa? <laughs> Um, well, I think the, the feeling was normal and then at the same time scary because the, the soprano solos in there were not like the usual ones that you could easily get away with. And so it was a bit of a challenge, but then of course, he knows us best. And so when he assigns something to you, he knows you can do it. So, yeah. So in the back of your mind, you were you were speared on by a little bit of fear, a little bit of um, unexpectedness. Yeah. And then yes. how did you go through mm -hmm. it? Because you sang a lot of a lot of solos, and one solo that I I think I feel a spreading. <laughs> with, that song is like 12, 30 minutes of uh, going up and down. How 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 did you prepare? Who, who helped you do that? So I think um, one person that I'll mention is Joel. Um, around the time that we were, were going to have that concert, we had an exam. And so having to, you know, study for the exam and then prepare for the concert as well was very hectic. As a matter of fact, on the day of the concert, actually 
had my book backstage <laughs> and I had no clue the storyline. So <laughs> it was very stressful for me that day. So Noel was 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 like my savior I'd say because he was taking me through when this person finishes the um, singing you are next so get ready then he will take me through the lyrics all over me. So it was so fun set that um showed me that truly all that we do on stage is not our doing. It's, it's just God and his grace because I had no idea what I was doing but then then the day the feedback that came showed that truly something good happened. So let's talk about let's 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 go away from your preparedness physically. Let's talk about the spiritual uh -huh. aspect also. Uh -huh. When you read the book uh -huh. of Joseph and the role that you played and uh -huh. how you were able to depict the story to the whole world, as you say, because now the whole world has watched it. Uh -huh. um, spiritually, uh -huh. how, how did you, um, what, what should I say? How did the book minister to you, that role that you played? How did it minister to you for you to bring it out into character? Okay, um, that particular aspect of Joseph's life we didn't know about honestly i didn't know about that aspect of life but then i feel that um behind every successful man there's a woman there's there's one one particular song that um Joseph was um filled with fear not knowing what to do whether to face the people or not and then the wife was trying to encourage him you know that the people loved him and so he was supposed to do what he can do and all of that it, it helped me in such a way whatever purpose you have in life what places one in your life clutter to aid you through it and so god is with us all the step of the way like anytime anywhere he's there and he will provide someone at a particular point in time to to help us through it so that is what i got from from a rule especially Right, I don't know if Imano, you have any questions to ask her. Yeah, the, the, the question will be behind back door. Um, she did mention uh, the fact that um, that aspect of Joseph's life, that is the wife of Joseph, was not much known. Um, and we know mm -hmm. what she's getting herself into in, in a couple of weeks' time. So uh, it's not a question, it will be an advice. Um, stand by the man mm -hmm. when there is crisis, when there is difficulty. Mm -hmm. I know I'm supposed to do this back door, but hey, uh. let me do it anyway. Yeah, so I'm, I'm grateful I know. that you've, you've already started your, 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 your lessons um, in 2017 to know how to stand by the man. But one thing mm -hmm. I want to add to mm -hmm. it is that um, Joseph married an African wife. So mm. the land of Africa played an important role in the life of Joseph. We are blessed. We will go much into it because Africa is a blessed land. We are blessed. Africa is and, a blessed land. And Lodina, before mm -hmm. I let you go, um, was there, at, I don't want us to sound like a very perfect choir and a very perfect human being that you were never scared at any point. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a point in the, during the preparations that you felt like, look, I don't, I, I don't think I can do this anymore. I think it's too much. It, exactly. Um, I think it was during our camp and all the other solos had dropped the books and I was still holding my book and and I see on our director's face you know when he's very confident about something you could just tell on his face when he saw me with my book he was a bit uh, uh, I don't know whether it was sadness or confusion or what and that's one thing I never want to see the kind of look I don't want to see it on his face I always want to you know Perform when he assigns anything to me, but at that point, I knew I just didn't memorize the lyrics, so I still had my book. So I remember on the morning of this concert, I had to call my, and then I was like, I wished the concert was because I am so not ready for this concert. I this is one of the concerts that I'm so prepared to you know, take off, but then I didn't see God through, and so yeah, I think that's it. There's fear all the time, you know way ahead of me like yeah but as, a, as as one of Ghana's very fine sopranos if not the finest so far um how did how did um, accomplishing this task of of being the lead soloist female soloist let's say in jab how did it propel you career wise uh -huh. um in, in in the space of you being the soprano in Ghana and achieve 
well dreaming of being a very professional soprano, which we all look forward to. How did it okay. propel you onwards? Okay, um, as I said, the, the people show that something good happened. And so you had a lot of people looking up to you, people coming to you that, oh, this particular song that you did it and the way you did it, can you teach us the techniques you use and all of that. But it was not saying that no matter how good you are, you still need somebody to assist you. You still need, because I had, for example, if Joel had not been by my side at the time, I don't think I would have done what I was able to do. Of course, the Lord was with me, but then he played someone there. As I said, someone was there to help me. And our director, too, was very helpful. Although he had his fears and all, he still, you know, encouraged me. And then after that, said, I received his message, and I was just so proud. When you do something for the Lord wholeheartedly, I mean, you get feedbacks. Mm. Even not at that particular moment, much later, you have people testifying about it. And then it shows you that truly, you just have to just put your heart to it and then you would go far. Yeah. Well, finally, finally, before I let you go, we are looking forward to still being joined by Joel. Um, but before I let you go, um, I, which, which chorus or which solo was your favorite? I think the final chorus on, was my on. favorite. Let me, let, me, let, me make the, <laughs> let, let me make the question double. <laughs> which chorus or which solo was your favorite? And what was that look on your face when we were singing the final chorus? Was it some emotions getting the, mixed up all there? <laughs> because I, I, was, I was tired no people noticed. But it was my breath control and everything. I was tense. So when you hear the final chorus, you know, sang... In fact, even with the final chorus, I didn't know much of the words, but thankfully, uh, the camera didn't, you know, <laughs> show my face a lot. <laughs> it was just a relief, like, finally, it is over. Now I can breathe. So, everything that were all the beautiful chorus in there, that particular song was, like, it had me, because that was my, 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 my relief, my relief point. And well. Um, prophetic raptures, I'd say, because right. that was that was also quite technical. Yeah, mm, it was a beautiful piece. Well, if you just joined us, we are having a conversation with the beautiful soprano Lodina. She has a YouTube channel. Yeah. Please go look for her and Lodina subscribe. The Lodina the Soprano on YouTube. Please go subscribe to her channel and enjoy all the beautiful works that she has. Hey, congratulations in advance. A bit fine in about two weeks' time. <laughs> thank you. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so thank, thank you very much, you. Lodina, for joining. Um, thank you for thank sharing you, your Amanda, for with us. Me. We wish you all the best. All the best, all the best in everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> well, boys. Great. So let's set the ball rolling. Let's take yes. our first um, piece, I the overture, and be firm, my soul, led by our own Ebenezer Nanayao Ejakwa Amusa. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Weekend Worship with the Harmonious Choral. If you just joined us, we are live from the studios of Divine Media HD, giving us divine, heavenly definition for all your projections and your online streaming to contact Divine Media for an excellent job. We are here in the studio today. We live in the moment when the Harmonious Choral performed Joseph and his brethren in 2017. For those who joined earlier, we had a conversation with a very beautiful Lordina de Soprano who played Asenath, the wife, of, of the main character Joseph. We took a solo by our main character Joseph himself and what he sang was be firm my soul. And the words are be firm my soul nor faint beneath afflictions galling chains when crowned with conscious virtues wreath the shackled captive reigns. But wherefore thus whence heaven these bitter bonds are these the just rewards of stubborn virtue is this contagious cell the due abode of too much innocence? Down, down, proud hearts, nor blindly question the benefits, the behest of heaven. These chastisements are just for some wise end, are all the partial ills allotted man. Very wow. powerful statements powerful. going on there. What was, going, what was Joseph going through at that time? At that very moment, um, like the... Um, one who gave the liberator says Joseph was uh, in prison and he was reclining in a melancholic mood. Mm. Joseph was very sad. Mm. You see, uh, Joseph had a dream. We all know the story, yes. or many of us know the story. Yes. Joseph had a dream where, in the dream, um, to cut a long story short, his whole family mother, father, brothers, um, elder brothers, actually, younger brother they were all bowing down to him. Mm. So the question was, are you going to rule over us? Are you going to lord over us? Now, the brothers envied Joseph because Joseph kept sharing the dream. And they decided to kill Joseph. We should also know that uh, Joseph was a favorite 
of his father. Well. Um, even if the father loved all of them equally, Joseph stood that because the father made something special for Joseph. That's giving Joseph the robe of many colors. And the father also put Joseph in charge of um, checking up on the brothers. <laughs> so one time Joseph went um, to the field to check up on his brothers, to give them food, and to also report on what was happening uh, back to his father. Mm -hmm. And they said, look, let's kill this guy. Let's mm -hmm. kill this guy. So as they were discussing among themselves whether to kill him or not, they tossed him into a dry pit. Then um, some traders were passing by the Ishmaelites. Um, mm -hmm. Ishmaelites, they will go back to become like Joseph's uncle's uncle, generation. Yeah. So they sold him to the Ishmaelites who went to Egypt and then sold J Joseph on the slave market. Um, for us to see Egypt display in the Bible tells us how Africa played an integral role <laughs> in the civilization civilization of mankind, of mankind yes, right. because everything was happening in Egypt. Um, they sold him, Joseph went to live in um, um, a master's house. Over there, everything that Joseph was doing was successful, so the master put him in charge of everything. Then the master's wife had an eye on Joseph, wanted to have something to do with him. Joseph refused by fleeing that temptation, and uh, <laughs> he was put into prison because the master's wife lied. and. That was it when Joseph was there, thinking about all these moments. I mean, I was in my father's house. I was living the moment. I was in charge of some stuff. I had a dream. I had a vision. God said these things about me. Now here am I in prison. And look at what he said. Um, then the other part says, are these just rewards of stubborn virtue? You see, Joseph had this stubborn virtue to know that, look, this is of God. This is not of God. Remember, by then, even the Ten Commandments hadn't come. Right. But Joseph, uh, when he was faced with temptation to sleep with the master's wife, says, um, Woe to me if I should sin against God. Over there, it doesn't mean that that's not commit adultery. No. But he knew God said that he knew this was a sin against God. That was how solid or stubborn Joseph's virtue was. So it's like... Let's, let's, let's just, um, in as much as we are trying to discuss mm -hmm. um, the book, and, and there are lots of moral lessons in, yes. that, in, in, in yeah. that story. So fast forward to this day, if mm -hmm. Joseph had lived to this day, in these days where, uh, for the lack of a very better, I would say that the youth... A vast majority of the youth is in for fast money, mm. fast possession, who drives the mm. fastest car, who yeah. wears the, 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 the smartest watch or anything. Yeah. Do you think if Joseph had lived in this generation, he would have fled from the master's wife? Uh, the virtue of Joseph, I believe, would have stood the test of time. Right. Because Joseph applied a principle that later, 2 Timothy 2.22, um, revealed, flee youthful lust. Mm -hmm. Joseph fled. Joseph did this stand and say, look, mm -hmm. I bind you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he fled. <laughs> so I believe Joseph would have stood the test of time. And it's, it's like you are saying, for us today, um, we think the fastest way to the top, if you're a lady, is to go to bed with the master. Wow. And if you're a guy and the mistress is a, has an eye on you, that's the fastest way you are going to go to the top. But it pays to have stubborn virtue, godly virtue. Because what is about to happen to Joseph later on will be much more bigger.